Okay, so good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Patrice, again. Thank you, Antonia, for inviting me to, to share with you some aspects of the Omnibus' portal system, a system for computer analysis of CTG plus ST signals. I would like to start saying that I don't receive any personal funding from the commercialization of this system, and the University of Porto receives royalties from, um, from it. So as we all know, uh, computer analysis with real-time alerts was uh, developed over the last uh, decades to overcome some of the limitations of CTG. We all know and are well aware of the inter- and intra-observer disagreement that actually affects the interpretation of CTG regarding aspects such as variability, accelerations, decelerations, and classifications, namely suspicious and pathological CTGs. And it was in this context that the um, computerized analysis has um, has surged as a, a, in a in a way to to uh, to translate this uh, this um, analysis in, in a reproducible and quantifiable way. And some of the some of the systems can actually give real time alerts that may prompt uh, the clinicians to reevaluate and to take adequate actions. There are uh, many um, computerized uh, analyses inside of uh, central monitoring stations that are nowadays commercially available, such as IntelliSpace, Pernatal, TriumCDG, Pericom, and Cardian, and as well as our uh, system that was developed in this medical school together with the uh, Institute of Biomedical Engineering of the University of Porto in the last three decades. Uh, we can see here depicted in the, le in the le left uh, side the Porto system as it was uh, in the 90s. And here in this uh, picture we can see uh, Prof. Bernardo still with hair, dark hair at that time, uh, that was one of the minds of, behind this, uh, this project at that time. Um, followed Professor Diogo uh, some, some years bef after the 90s. So the CISPORTO system was first commercialized in 2009 and is in urgent clinical use at several hospitals across the world. It is a central fetal monitoring station with computer analysis and real-time alerts uh, involving CTG and ST events when, when these are available. It was actually the first uh, system to incorporate combined analysis uh, of CTG and ST event signals. Actually, this system has undergone extensive clinical validation in the last decades, from which I would like to share with you some ideas, uh, three, three uh, studies I would like to share with you some, some topics. One of the main uh, studies was this one that evaluated the accuracy of computer analysis of fetal heart rate and ST event signals in the prediction of severe neonatal acidemia. It was a prospective study that included 148 stand tracings. Um, single to pregnancies with more than 36 weeks cephalic presentation were included and a uh, very short period between the, the, uh, the end of the tracing and the uh, delivery uh, was necessary to be part of this study. Less than 5 minutes interval to vaginal delivery or less than 20 minutes interval to cesarean delivery. Major fetal malformations and complications that could cause fetal hypoxia between tracing ends and delivery were excluded, such as uh, shoulder dystocia or uh, anesthetic complications uh, during or per cesarean section. Um, the most severe alerts of, of the system in the last hour of, of the tracing were compared with the occurrence of umbilical artery um, acidemia umbilical artery pH less than 7.05, and uh, actually a very high sensitivity, but well, the one, the maximum sensitivity was obtained in these cases, 
and a very high specificity of 0.94. Um, actually, the, the confidence interval to, to sensitivity was quite wide because it, it, were all, it were, was only included seven cases of fetal uh, acidemia. The FM alert, I'm, I'm sure many of you have heard of it, uh, was a multicenter randomized controlled trial that was conducted in the UK, which was published in the Green Journal in 2017. The aim was to evaluate whether computer analysis of CTGs reduced the rate of newborn metabolic acidosis when compared to visual analysis. Secondary way aims were to evaluate the effect of this technology on other measures of perinatal outcome and intervention rates. It was conducted over five uh, centers in the UK. Eligibility criteria, so gestation more than 36 completed weeks. Um, patients uh, should have inactive labor, but not inactive second stage. And uh, it, they were included after a decision was made to perform continuous CTG monitoring, such as, for instance, uh, after the start of uh, epidural. Randomization was performed on a one-to-one -one relation, either to the experimental arm, computer analysis with alerts, or the control arm, continuous monitoring, as previously performed a visual, uh, with visual analysis, using a computer-generated randomization sequence attributed to the program, by the program. So in the intervention arm, ultimate uh, management decisions remain the responsibility of healthcare professionals, However, non-directive guidelines were uh, provided, and CTG plus FP analysis and or FPS were allowed in both arms of the trial. Data analysis followed an intention to treat principle. When no artery and vein data were available, the case could still be classified as metabolic acidosis if acid base in the first hour of life uh, showed a lactate more than 10. So this is the trial profile. Patients uh, assessed for eligibility were 32,306. 7,730 patients were enrolled and randomized. 3,961 were allocated to computer analysis of CDG signals with alerts. And 3,769 allocated to standard CDG monitoring visual analysis. Uh, the intention to treat analysis included all uh, allocated patients according to the predefined pre pre uh, analysis. So the primary outcome, metabolic acidosis, we had 16 cases in the experimental arm, 22 cases in the uh, control arm, so a very low incidence of metabolic acidosis. The, rel the relative risk was 0 0.69, with a quite great confidence interval that included one, so with no a statistical significant uh, result. Secondary outcomes, there were no statistically difference between the two groups, uh, either for uh, pH less than 7.10, APA score less than 75 minutes, HIE, cesarean section rate, or instrument of delivery for non reassuring fetal status. We performed a non-specified subgroup analysis that showed us that for uh, in patients with previous or pregnancy diseases, severe acidemia was significantly lower in the experimental arm. 58 cases versus 678. So in conclusion, continuous monitoring of CTGs with computer analysis and real-time alerts is associated with low incidence of metabolic acidosis and does not increase intervention rates, which is quite good. However, there is no clear demonstration of benefit when compared with visual analysis, at least in uh, this high-risk population uh, group of, of patients. A larger sample size or a similar trial in centers with less uh, experience may be needed because, as you all know, in these centers, there are clinicians are very highly trained uh, with great skills in fetal monitoring. Now, another study I would like to share with you is this recently published study in the American Journal, which 
was uh, a retrospective that aimed to evaluate the impact of introducing computerized strategies and ST analysis on perinatal outcomes and intervention rates in a tertiary care center where all laboring women are continuously monitored, which is actually the reality in Portugal in most of the maternity wards. So there were included 38,466 births after 24 weeks. Um, the data were, was obtained uh, after, uh, after consulting electronic patient record database, the OPSCare, which is used here for a long time now, and then an administrative database to, um, to complete data. Perinatal outcomes and intervention rates that were uh, analyzed, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, uh, that included changes in muscle tone, feeding, state of conscience, or seizures in the first 48 hours of life, associated with a hypoxia acidemia documented in umbilical or uh, newborn blood in the first hour of life, overall cesarean section rate, and urgent cesarean section rate, excluding the electives. And finally, the cesarean section rate for non reassuring fetal state. So in this big group of patients, patients were uh, divided into two main groups. One uh, included between January 2001 and December 2003. So before Cisporto and then were uh, used in the maternity ward. And the, the big, uh, big patient group after this time until the end of 2014. After these two techniques were uh, started to be uh, to be used uh, in in everyday uh, clinical practice, and we can see here that uh, in 2005, Cisporto and Stan um, were uh, actually the analysis of these two uh, systems were included in the central monitoring station, and in 2006, Cisporto actually. Uh, started to produce alerts with CTG plus ST analysis. So the, the alerts were uh, finally together. So we can see that comparing, comparing these two uh, groups of patients, uh, actually there was a very significant reduction in HIE of 58% with a very light reduction in overall cesarean section rate and urgent cesarean section rates. 4 and 9%, uh, and there was an increase in vaginal delivery instrumental rates, but only 7%, um, not very, very big difference, but still there was a difference in, in, this, uh, in this type of delivery. So this is in contrast with, with the randomized controlled trial data from uh, an observational study. That, of course, has uh, its limitations because it's a retrospective one. But I think it's worth, uh, it's worth our analysis and actually is in line with other results from other observational studies that were recently published with data from Finland and from um, Utrecht in the Netherlands. And finally, to share with you very quickly, the, the last version of this portal, 4.0, that was published in 2016. Uh, it included uh, the adapted uh, 2015 FIGO guidelines in the real-time visual and sound alerts. Actually, uh, the, the system starts to uh, analyze the tracing automatically after 10 minutes uh, of its acquisition. And it's uh, updated every single minute. No signal averaging or reduction is performed regarding the signal. Signals are analyzed by complex uh, mathematical algorithms that identify uterine contractions, baseline accelerations, decelerations, uh, short and long term variability. And a series of uh, different algorithms also integrate CTG and ST features when these are available. And these uh, all together, it comes up with alerts that differ uh, from, from each other regarding the probability of hypoxia, 
green when there is no hypoxia, yellow when there is a low probability of hypoxia, and red when there is a high probability of hypoxia. And just very quickly to share some examples with you, this one increased variability, the saltatory pattern is of course uh, a red alert according to the fetal, gui fetal guidelines when it is present for more than uh, 30 minutes. This one, the sinusoidal pattern, uh, red alert as well. <laughs> this one, repetitive decel decelerations and a nasty event, and in this last part of the tracing, we can actually see decreased variability inside the decelerations and the nasty event at, at, the, at the end. This green alert, uh, in, in this pattern that is quite very difficult to classify, the, the pattern of fetal behavior, we have been talking a lot of fetal behavior, and sometimes it's very difficult to see if this is an accelerative pattern or a decelerative pattern. And in this, uh, in, this, um, in this version of the program, actually the wandering baseline that we can see here that follows the main pattern of the fetal heart rate can actually uh, give us the, uh, the chance of classifying correctly this, this tracing compared to the previous version of the system that actually didn't do this modulation of the baseline over time. And finally, uh, this example uh, of uh, an algorithm where the variability uh, in, the, in the deceleration is included in the, in the alert, as well as the ST events. And actually, this, this alert is actually uh, adapted to the internal or external nature of the signal, which is a very important feature. So in conclusion, I would like to say that this system has uh, been sub subject to extensive clinical validation in the last decade, high sensitivity and specificity in the prediction of severe newborn acidemia can actually be was proved before. Access to computer analysis and alerts may result in reduced fetal, fetal metabolic acidosis in a high-risk population. But many aspects were integrated in a new version of the system, and re-evaluation studies are currently uh, ongoing. Namely, the accuracy of CIS4 to 4.0 alerts in predicting newborn acidemia uh, is currently being evaluated in a large data set. And maybe we could eventually use one of the data says you, you've shown to us in these two days would be very, very important and interesting to us to test our system in your databases. And the impact of the CIS4 to 4.0 alert on the incidence of the adverse outcomes and intervention rates needs to be evaluated eventually in our city in centers with moderate experience in CTG interpretation and subsequent clinical management. Well, this is a question that actually doesn't have an answer. And thank you for your attention. Yeah. Well, Martin, thank you for your question. Uh, well, actually, the system is currently being used in, in centers with less experience. But actually, in those centers, sometimes it's very, it's very difficult to obtain the information we need because it's not registered in a, in a daily, in daily practice. Uh, but if they had the chance to register all the information we need, maybe at that time, we would be able to answer to it. Of course. Yeah. And so, as an observational or as a, as in our city? Name a few centers. Name a few centers? Uh, for instance, Povod Verzin, 
uh, here, 50 kilometers away, Matosinhos, uh, 10 kilometers away, Portuguese, yeah, I'm talking about Portuguese, but in, in other places in the world, the system is being used. We, we don't have the data to evaluate if they are capable of monitoring babies better than we are, for instance. I, I don't know. Maybe. Yes, maybe not. I don't know. Just to give a, a more detailed example, we, we were thinking, uh, I, I went over to Brazil, so to so as to have a randomized controlled trial, testing it against uh, uh, an intermittent auscultation in the center, in the big center in uh, Belo Horizonte, which is uh, Minas Gerais, a huge place. And uh, so we, there was a PhD student, a lot of enthusiasm, and then in the end, uh, you know, they, they have a lot of issues regarding data recording. So, uh, and he decided, or he, he, he tried for two or three months and then he moved to another place and that was it. So, you know, it, I think we have intermediate uh, centers that are not so interested in research. So that's, I think, where we could have some benefits of the system. It would be easier to show the benefit. But for, for the randomized controlled trials, it's usually the people who are very much into research, yeah, yeah, yeah. have very good data uh, bases. And for them, you know, because it's already the, the quality of, of, of care is high. So it's really difficult to show a difference. No. No, yeah, they, they, they were recording everything in Word files. So, yeah, so, yeah, things like that. It, it, just to, to also to add, Hugo is here, and he he can uh, say other centers. It's not just Portugal. It's the system is all over the world. And it's yeah. uh, Singapore. There are a few centers there. Uh, Malaysia. In, in, yeah. in Spain, France. Yeah. I do have a slide. I can show you. In another presentation, I can show you. But Hugo is the, the you can give me two, two us, minutes. So I can show you. Right? Yeah, I can show you. I can show you. I can show you in a, in a second. It's a big problem in many, many senses. <laughs> Does that mean it's in, in the middle of the Indian Ocean? In the middle of the ocean. So fishes, we also do fit of for the ocean. Oh yes, my yacht, my yacht island, yes. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for a wonderful talk. Yes, my question is the how to sort react and uh, management questions. It's uh, it is important for us to take into account for prematurity and uh, uh, intrauterine infection informations yeah, and uh, FGR. So, in such cases, how do you react? And how do you manage it? And uh, so based, they are based in uh, such a, a background of patient. Prof, can you repeat the question? Yeah, yeah. So, it's, yeah, we, yeah, we so, have to speak louder. Uh, so, uh, on uh, the patient, the background is uh, so more important is uh, so infection, intrauterine infection, and the FGR. And the prematurity, I think it's we should uh, react differently from the normal background. Of course. So in uh, the big data, how the uh, doctors or the midwives is uh, react differently from the 
how many percentage of the infection, how many percentage of the yes. FGR, how many percentage of prematurity. Could you explain a yes. little bit more? Yes, thank you, Tomaki. Actually, this system doesn't integrate that kind of big data into the alerts. It's up to the clinicians. Of course, clinicians must interpret the alerts according to clinical backgrounds. Of Is course, but it's not... Guideline or the management it's, manuals to support doctors. Is that you have to touch things? The manual, the, the manual for, for, to, for the system doesn't include uh, it alerts that it should be the clinical judgment should include clinical background, but the alerts are not related with that. So they have to put it in a in a clinical background and then react accordingly. So, of course, it's a, the system itself doesn't reduce adverse outcomes, of course. It depends on clinicians. Yeah. But it would be great to have that data, probably, in, in the future, integrated in a system. But that, that is not the aim of CISPORT system. CISPORT system only examines, only evaluates CDG patterns and STDs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Inesh, great presentation as as always. I think I think you might be slightly unfair to this portal in how very cautious you are in terms of the conclusions you drew from the study. The one thing you didn't mention was the low frequency of metabolic acidosis yeah. in both arms. Um, sure. And I think that plays into the narrative of what you might do in future if you're looking at units that have less expertise in CT interpretation. So in the UK, for example, there is no culture of testing babies for um, acid-based status at birth, which means that the background information in terms of what the rate is, is unknown. Exactly. When the study was planned initially, we went with what was available in, at St. George's Hospital. But that was actually from a subset of very high risk patients. And that's what the power of the study was based on. Yeah. Now, obviously, it may have clearly contaminated and undermined you know, the results. And I was glad to see that if you were to look at the subset uh, that is high risk, it did have an impact. So, in going forward, it would be very useful to sort of ensure that that aspect of it is tackled. But you still have the same problem because other than the United States or maybe a few other countries in the world, I don't know anywhere where there's a culture of uh, baseline acidosis uh, of newborn. Uh, good luck with it anyway. Thank you, Austin, for your comments. Thank you so much. It means a lot for me. But actually, according to the, to the culture here in Portugal, we don't have that culture either. But when I was a, a student, a six year medical student, I went to Belgium, and my task was to measure pH in all babies that were born in the maternity hospital. So in that uh, particular environment, all babies were all babies born in the maternity hospital were tested for metabolic acidosis. So maybe we could eventually. I don't. I, I'm not sure if they use. I, I don't think they use this portal, but would be interesting to to know. Yes. Uh, yeah, every every single mo baby that is born is test yeah. is test for every, every low risk high risk yeah every yeah, every yeah doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, my question, I think the, the system has a lot of potential, as you said, uh, to be translated into the clinical practice, but my, my, I'm going to translate that into the clinical practice. But my question is related to how do you, what kind of training do you do to all the staff? Because as you said, it is based also on the experience, but it is very important. For example, this is a young clinician that doesn't have that kind of experience, how they are going to learn and interpret the alerts. And for example, in the UK, for example, uh, Clinicians or clinical staff doesn't want to have any equipment because this is a lot, a lot of information they are receiving, and sometimes that, that information confuses them. How do you manage that here in Portugal? 
<laughs> Thank you for your question. Um, well, in Porto, we have this tradition of uh, running regular training sessions to the staff. But we know that is not the reality in most of Portuguese matern maternity wards. Uh, it, and it, it would be ideally that that would be there. There would be a national guidance to run uh, training sessions for all the maternity hospitals. And in terms of after commercialization of the system, when the system is is um, is installed in a new maternity hospital, normally there is technical uh, support for a long time. And sometimes one of us goes there and gives uh, sessions, training sessions to, to the staff. Yeah, Trump is speaking as well. Because we had 40 minutes. Maybe we should close the... I think there's eight minutes. Yeah, Trump, maybe. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, it should be quick because it's a somewhat related question. I was interested, how do you study the interaction of the system and clinicians? In other words, uh, how do you optimize the decision-making process? We didn't, unfortunately. That, that is one of the main uh, limitations of, of the study. We didn't have the, the means to study that. Sim, sim. Eu ponho Sim, sim, já está. Ok, good morning. Uh, I will only like, like 10 minutes, so it will be brief. Um, I want to present this paper which, directly, uh, which resulted directly from uh, two years ago, SPAM. So, uh, starting with this, I would like to thank uh, SPAM organizers for um, the, the workshop back in Oxford. And again, uh, I want to I wanna thank Antonia again because uh, she actually ended up being one of the reviewers, the reviewers, which uh, gave us a lot of uh, useful uh, feedback, uh, which improved the quality of the paper. So um, it started with the, the challenge. Uh, two years ago, there was a challenge for those who weren't there. Um, each group was given 300 uh, fetal heart rate tracings, uh, which we uh, needed to classify uh, blinded, so we didn't know which one were uh, systemic or not. So we classified them, sent the results, and then we, we got a score back. Um, and we had like six, uh, five or six uh, attempts. Um, and uh, um, so we kind of got nice results, and it was the, 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 the rational for um, uh, a more extensive study, which ended up with this paper. Um, so this is our, some characteristics of tracings. Um, so no preterm. Uh, all tracings are uh, 400, uh, 4 hertz. Singleton pregnancies, and it, it, all data sets I'm going to talk about here, they are all intrapartum. And uh, we wanted to uh, classify the tracings with, in acidemic or non -acidemic. So in 2017, we used the um, original SPAM uh, data set, uh, which there were 60 epidemic. And then we, we used um, one data set here, uh, which served as a testing data set for our parameters tuning. Um, the one drawback is that uh, there are only um, seven epidemic or six, depending on the definition, using or not the base axis. Base axis. Uh, and then uh, after we, we tuned the parameters, we tested it on the uh, an open data set, uh, which is uh, a very popular. So a uh, very simple preprocessing was done with um, 
simple uh, filters, uh, linear interpolation, um, substitution of uh, segments who are not um, correctly um, drawn from the tracing, and then everything was rounded, rounded to units, so we would not have um, rounded and not rounded uh, fetal heart rate beating. So um, the classification approach works like this. Uh, we, we, we compute the FFT, uh, the fast Fourier transform, uh, as Professor Mario was, was saying. Um, so it is a, a spectral analysis which, which has already uh, quite substantial um, evidence on the parasympathetic and sympathetic uh, branches of the autonomous nervous system. And uh, so for those who are not acquainted with the FFT, so up there we have the original uh, fetal heart rate tracings, and on the lower panels we have uh, the respective FFT plot. And uh, uh, that baby there is a normal baby, uh, and here this one is an academic. So we kind of saw that um, the behavior in FFT plot was kind of different. So we tried to model um, some mod some um, way to um, automatically uh, classify the, the, the babies, the fetus, in uh, systemic or not. So this is how it works. Uh, we define, uh, there, there has to be two uh, parameters defined. One is the amplitude cutoff, and the other are the number of peaks. So this works as follows. Um, taking all the babies into account, we check what was the maximum amplitude and the lowest. And then we, we had to define the minimum and maximum cutoff so that all babies were um, um, given acidemic or non acidemic. For example, um, if we define a P of 1, so P is number of peaks, uh, the threshold here, uh, down on this line, will, will say that this baby is acidemic. And so we did this for uh, p between 1 and 10. So if, for example, the line is here, the threshold line is here, but we define p as 4 or 5, we only have 3 points. So this will be um, classified as a non acidemic a normal baby. So we did all this for between p1 and 10. And we, for each p, we uh, divided the, the, this whole amplitude in 50 different uh, cutoffs, and we calculated the area under curve, so the sensitivity and specificity uh, for uh, each of them. Okay, so our best results were achieved for uh, for our training set for uh, p equal four, so four uh, peaks above the threshold, and the threshold for this data set was the twenty seventh, uh, counting from down to up, twenty seventh uh, step. And we have a uh, very, very big, very wide interval constant because we only have seven um, acidemic babies. Um, and we had um, 0 0.85 uh, of specificity. For the training, oh, sorry. Okay, yeah. So then we tested this uh, on the open, this, this parameters we tested on the open data set available online. Um, and uh, we achieved a uh, sensitivity of 0 0.6 and specificity of 0 0.8. So uh, let me stop and say this is a very simple uh, method. Uh, not complex, not really, maybe FFT is the most complex um, uh, calculation here. Uh, and then we compared to uh, many different approaches, uh, most of them using the, the same data set. And we see that um, there's no uh, very big um, difference between most of them. And while uh, uh, we used uh, the whole uh, data set, which contained the, the pH of the baby, which was 500 and something, most of these data sets were uh, only using a subset of traces because they were uh, the most clean, so uh, so uh, they could ha uh, they were uh, having uh, better results. And uh, besides that, a lot of these uh, studies were using very complex methodologies, um, uh, um, contrary to us. Um, so again, again, um, I want I want to underline that 
I, I'm, not, I'm not in favor of a single um, single approach to classify the babies. I'm, uh, I, I, I think that a multivariate uh, model will be the way to go, uh, as, as some speakers have said in here. Um, we do think that uh, this can be uh, one um, small uh, uh, step uh, that can aid uh, for this uh, bigger model that uh, we need to approach, uh, for sure. Uh, so, um, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, it was uh, a bit by chance. Uh, so we were in the challenge, and we were trying different approaches for the challenge. So new, new stuff we do. Um, so uh, when um, when we send our first approach uh, for uh, for the challenge using spectral analysis, um, uh, we saw that it has potential. So we, we kept going uh, until until we are here. So there's not really big background besides the background that spectral analysis had had uh, good results in. Uh, Get to read classification. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry. Okay. Maybe um, you know my question. But it's it's more uh, more for the first part of the talk. Sorry. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, so Ines, your presentation indeed, I agree with my colleague there. Looks a bit pessimistic in terms of uh, the, the the potential interaction between our two communities, and it's maybe a bit desperate desperate for for engineers here. Because it seems like the computer cannot do better, and I don't think it's a it's a power of the computer. I think nowadays, Diego, um, a computer can do almost anything you want in a very very not, maybe not real time, but so short today that it would be real time for any human normally constituted. So I think the, the the question is not there. The question is is what do you ask the computer to do at the end? And this is exactly why we are here today. So I would, and it's a very naive question, but. Don't see any any intention, bad intention here. What, what's your conclusion about? What's your interpretation of the fact that the computer didn't beat the, the the trained humans? Like because as I said, the computer is powerful. It's not a computational time issue. It's not the power of the computation. And I do believe that if you try to count something, a computer will do it better than a human. So why is it, according to you or anyone in the room, that this shows no substantial benefits or Nothing that can be actually uh, quantified. Just to answer, and probably there is no one answer to this question. I think. Yeah, yeah. Do you no, want I, I, to start? I, 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 have, I have my idea. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we we I didn't exploit that much, but RCT has uh, many limitations to test what really happens in real life. And that's why I try to show you an observational study that is not designed exactly to show that computer beats humans or uh, either way, uh, but to show that actually there was a very positive impact on the use of this uh, system of this technology in clinical practice. Uh, so I, I don't think it's not that question of uh, being better than humans or the other way around. So I think it's very helpful to have computer analysis. And as Diogo actually said a few minutes ago, we, we are not able visually to analyze, for instance, variability. And for that, we only have computers to do so. So I think we will not uh, stop using the system as we are not using stop using CTG analysis during uh, intrapartum uh, surveillance. Just because we don't, we didn't show until now that CTG doesn't make a difference compared to intermittent auscultation in terms of uh, perinatal outcomes, which actually hasn't been the the, the situation here. Uh, I don't know if you want. Yeah. I think it has to do with the 
paradigm that you need a randomized controlled trial to show uh, uh, benefits. And I think if, if uh, you know, maybe Ines put it in a modest way, but I think the, the American Journal paper published um, this year or last year, the, the study evaluating in this hospital, uh, well, the one just next to, to where we are, that's showing that hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy had almost disappeared over the course of 10 years, uh, the rates. Uh, I think that's probably what it, it's what we want it, as clinicians. We want to for that to go. And there, there are several other studies from other hospitals in Europe that have shown that uh, metabolic acidosis has almost disappeared just by being more careful the way you do uh, compute, uh, you do CTG interpretation using uh, adjunctive technologies. So w whatever the reason is, I think we've we've been. The message has to be positive, because since the beginning of this century, things have changed. Whether it's the computer itself, whether it's a stand, whether it's the way the you know the way we've pay, been paying more attention to how we monitor, we don't really know what it is, and that's why the but the randomized controlled trial, which should be the, the way to show that, has some limitations. First of all, because most of the randomization was done during the hours of the day and some of the things that go wrong are mostly at night um, and because when a randomized controlled trial is ongoing people are paying much more attention to what is happening they don't want a, an adverse outcome in something that's being monitored in the random the Hawthorne effect so as, as Austin was saying we were expecting 2% or 1.5% metabolic acidosis rates and we got 0.4 so it's really difficult. There was a trend towards better results for the computer, but we needed many more cases to show if that trend was really significant or not. So I think the message overall should be positive, although I think we still need to improve on some of the other. Anyone want to contribute to this? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 yeah. Of course, there are there are potential bias, but I am even I was even more questioning more fundamentally. Like, is it is it like in the the, the features that are computed that are not powerful enough? Should we expect that AI is going to change things? Anyway, I think that this kind of small thing is changing our life, but doesn't prevent us from still being intelligent. And humans, I mean, and and I think at the end, what we are showing in this meeting and in this room, and that's why we are happy that there are people from the medicine and people from uh, from uh, computer science in the same room, is that intelligent artificial intelligence is great and it's going to improve algorithm, etc. But human intelligence is still above that. Okay, so maybe it's time for coffee. <laughs>